OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today on this Wednesday afternoon. My name is Diana Vera Alba, and I will pr be presenting today on using Creative Commons license and Creative Commons licensed works. Again, my name is Diana Vera Alba. I'm an OTAN subject matter expert and an ESL and OER coordinator at San Diego College of Continuing Education. Sorry, everyone, I'm gonna stop sharing. I forgot to turn on my camera. And let me try that again. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Diana Vera Alba, and I will be presenting on using Creative Commons licenses and Creative Commons licensed works. I am an OTAN subject matter expert here um, with Melinda, and I am also an ESL and OER coordinator at the San Diego College of Continuing Education. So thank you very much for being here. A little bit about myself. I've been an online instructor, teacher, and trainer since 2012. I taught in the modalities of distance education, hybrid, now high flex, and online ESL courses. I've been a trainer and online faculty mentor with my district as an OER and CAPE coordinator, um, as well as a Canvas course design trainer, an accessibility trainer, and here with OTAN as a subject matter expert. Some of my hobbies include gardening, photography, and I love animals. So I have dogs and chickens, and I have lots of both. <laughs> So before we get started with the presentation, I want to see how familiar you are with using open educational resources. So if you can please go to chat and type the number one. If you are not familiar with OERs, type number two. If you are somewhat familiar with OERs, and type number three if you are very familiar with OERs. Okay, all right. Hi, Stephen. Thank you for being here. All right. So thank you for voting. And that just helps me pace the presentation for you. Okay, so great. All right. So um, this is our agenda for today. So we're going to take a deep dive into Creative Commons licenses. Um, so we're going to look at what we need to know about OERs, the five R's of OERs. We're going to look at the type of Creative Commons licenses used to identify OERs and their usage. Then we're going to go into how to apply Creative Commons licenses. So we're going to take a look at the Creative Commons chooser, and we're going to have time to practice on that application, that online application. And then we're going to end with attributions and we're going to look at the Washington Open Attribution Builder. And then you're going to get time to practice using that uh, online application as well. So let's get started. And we're going to look at the definition of open educational resources from the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation. So OERs are open educational free uh, resources that are free and openly licensed educational materials that can be used for teaching, learning, research, and other purposes. Open education is the simple and powerful idea that the world's knowledge is a public good and that technology in general and the web in particular provide an extraordinary opportunity for everyone to share use and reuse knowledge. 
And that really is my favorite part about OER is that we are able to share our knowledge, right? All of us learned everything at some point, right? Different points in our lives and it was shared with us. So it's really nice that we, um, those of us that embrace OERs um, are in that sharing community and that we are willing to share with others and then they in turn will share with us. We can reuse their knowledge. They can reuse our knowledge. So that is one of my favorite things about OERs. Um, so OERs are open educational resources that hold a specific license. And this license explains how the author wants to give us permission on the use of their materials and how the author wants to be given credit. Okay, so both of those appear on all the Creative Commons licenses. So some examples of what open educational resources could be. They could be a full textbook. They could be a single unit or chapter from that textbook. It could be a worksheet. It could be an interactive activity. It could be an audio file, an image file, or video files. It can be a presentation like this presentation is licensed Creative Commons. Basically, almost anything that can assist you with teaching and learning can be an open educational resource. So in order for a resource to be considered a true OER, they have to have these, they have to contain these five uh, permissions. And the five permissions include the right to revise a resource, the right to remix a resource, the right to reuse a resource, the right to redistribute or share a resource, and the right to retain a copy of that resource, whether it's in your computer file or downloaded and printed. So these are the five R's uh, that should be um, part of an OER. We're going to take a look at a video called a shared culture. And in this video, you're going to get a broader sense of what open educational resources are. Okay, so it's a short three minute and 20 second video. So if you could just give me a thumbs up once I play it to make sure that you could hear it. What does it mean to be human if we don't have a shared culture? And what does a shared culture mean if you can't share it? It's only in the last 100 or 150 years or so that we've started tightly restricting how that culture gets used. The internet enabled an infrastructure where anybody could participate without asking permission. We have all these new technologies that allow people to express themselves, take control of their own creative impulses, but the law is getting in the way. Creative Commons is designed to save the world from failed sharing. People who actually want to share stuff, who put it up on the web because they want to share it on certain terms. So we wanted to create a simple way for creators to say to the world, here's the freedom that I want to run with my creative work. Here are the things you're allowed to do. Can I reproduce it? Can I copy it? Can I put it in my textbook? Can I use that photograph? Can I make a new version of it? Creative Commons gives tools to creators to make a choice about copyright. Creative Commons license can cover anything that copyright covers. Every license says, you need to give me attribution. I created this, give me credit for the work I did. The basic choices are commercial use or not. Can you make derivative works, versions, adaptations, or not? And do you want me to have to share alike? So if I take your stuff, do I have to offer it to the next person under the same terms? There's no requirement for you to do anything with your work other than what you want to do. You own the copyright to it. What we've done is given you the right to exercise your copyright in more ways, more simply. 
So the idea here is to enable the creative impulses that the technology turns loose and get the law out of the way. The work of Creative Commons is really about laying the, the infrastructure groundwork for this new type of culture, a new kind of folk culture. Somebody from Delhi, somebody from New York, somebody from Singapore can feel comfortable using a photo that was created and given away by someone in the United States or in China or wherever that the licenses have been extended to. With their identity being preserved. Which means that people can actually uh, create new kinds of things, come together and, and build things. Mashups that people can do with people's Flickr photos. And CC Mixter has allowed artists to make music together. It's really about creativity and connection. Access and control. From amateurs who simply for the love of what they're doing and they want to share it and they want other people to be able to make use of it to commercial organizations. In the end, this will have a very successful place in the for-profit economy. Creative Commons is, is the bridge to this future, is you got to move away from thinking about content to thinking about communities. Communities that develop around content and the sharing that the licenses allow enable these communities to come together. A physical commons is like a park where anybody can enter equally. A commons with intellectual works is actually much freer. It really is going to be the pillar for communications between some people, cultural exchange. The space for more speech, more free expression. And that's the kind of commons we're trying to create. All right. So hopefully that gave you a little broader knowledge of what OERs can be. All right. So let's go ahead and continue. What does it mean to be? So we're going to take a deeper dive into those five permissions, the five OE, um, permissions of OERs. And the first one is the right to revise. So this means that you have the right to adapt, adjust, modify, alter the content of the materials. So for example, you can translate or rewrite the content into another language. Okay, so let's say you find this awesome resource, but you're teaching Spanish and the resource is in English. If you have these permissions, you are able to translate that resource into the language that you would like to use. The next permission is the right to remix. And that gives, this gives you the right to combine the original or revised content with other materials to create something new. So for example, you can take a unit from an openly licensed book and use sections of it, mix it with your own materials and create a new unit. So with audio, you can incorporate the audio of one piece of music into your own piece of music and create a mashup, okay? So I'm currently in a project at my district um, where we received a grant where we are revising a book. So we are actually using this permission. We're remixing the book with our own content and creating a new uh, revised book. So the third permission is reuse. And this gives the user the right to use the content in a right, uh, wide range of ways. So for example, you can use the resource in a class, in a study group, on a website, or in a video. Okay, so very important to have this permission. The next permission is the right to redistribute the resource. So with this permission, you have the right to share copies of the original content, your revisions, or your remixes with others. So ex for example, you can give a copy of the new content to a student. You can post it on your website. You can post it in your LMS like Canvas. So this is what we plan to do with our revised book that we're currently working on. We want to redistribute it. We want to share it with others. We will likely upload it to one of the repositories or maybe more than one of the repositories where many of these uh, resources exist so that we can share it out. 
And the last um, uh, R permission is retain. And this gives the user the right to make, own, and control copies of the content. So for example, you can download the copy, you can duplicate the copy, you can store the copy, and you can manage the copy. Okay, so for example, I did not create this download icon. I retrieved it from the Noun Project, which is a great site that houses millions of icons. I gave permission, I mean, I gave uh, attribution to the owner of or creator of this icon, and I was able to download it and upload it to my slides. Any questions on the five R's? All right, and if you do have any questions, please make sure that you post it to the chat or um, raise your hand. Okay, thank you. All right. So we're going to watch a video um, before we get into those Creative Commons licenses. I'm going to go over them. We're going to watch a video uh, that is an overview of those licenses and what OERs are. Have you ever wondered how to download and share digital content legally? How do you let people know that you want them to reuse your own work? Creative Commons licenses can help you do both. We'll show you how. Our world's exploded with digital opportunities. Now we can communicate, share and work together using the exceptional distribution network that is the Internet. Information and content can fly between us in exciting new ways. But it's important to know that when something is created, say a photo, a document or a music track, it's automatically protected by copyright. Copyright enables people to say who can share and reuse their creations. You must always obtain someone's permission before sharing or reusing their work, even when it's posted online. But what if a creator wants everyone to use their work, without the hassle of granting permission over and over? This is where Creative Commons can help. Creative Commons provides licensing tools that are free to use. You can apply a license to your work, which refines your copyright and streamlines how you give permission. Zach here downloads a photo called CC Kiwi that he wants to use in his science project. He can do this without asking Kiri, the photographer first, because she's already given permission with a Creative Commons license. Kiri's license is legally robust, but easy for Zach to understand. She's told the world, including Zach, that they can use CC Kiwi as long as they acknowledge her as the original photographer. There are more rules Kiri could have included. Creative Commons licenses are made up of license elements. You can think of them as rules, and each have their own special symbol. This is attribution. It means that Zach must acknowledge Kiri when he publishes his science project containing her photo. This is non-commercial. It means no one else but Kiri is permitted to make money from CC Kiwi. Tim wants to print the photo onto t-shirts and distribute them to friends. He can do this, but he must not sell them. This is no derivatives, and it means that Kiri hasn't given permission to change her photo. Kate can use CC Kiwi on her design blog, but will need to ask Kiri before retouching or mixing up the image. And this is share alike. It means new creations that use CC Kiwi need to carry the same license. Jack incorporates his own remix of CC Kiwi in his video installation, but he must share the work under the same terms that Kiri has. Each Creative Commons license gives permission to share and includes the attribution rule. So people who find your Creative Commons licensed work are automatically allowed to share it, but are required to acknowledge you if they do. The other three license elements are optional, and you can choose which ones to add, if any. Here are the six combinations that make up Creative Commons licenses. The difference between them is how many rules apply when someone wishes to use your work. The attribution license allows reusers the most freedom and the attribution non-commercial no derivatives license allows the least freedom. The attribution license and the attribution share alike licenses 
are sometimes referred to as free cultural works approved licenses. These three licenses restrict commercial use of a work. And these two licenses do not give permission for adapting or remixing. These two licenses require new works to be licensed under the same terms. To choose and apply one of these licenses, and to view their terms in more detail, visit us at creativecommons.org.nz. Or you can answer some questions to help you decide which license best suits your needs at creativecommons.org slash choose. There are some good ways to find other people's Creative Commons licensed work online. You can use a search filter by going to the Creative Commons website. Or why not try the Gemendo website for music, Flickr for images, or Digital NZ for New Zealand content. Using Creative Commons licenses could help your creations reach more people. Maybe you want to connect with others across the globe and take turns at improving a report. Or maybe you just want to have fun remixing someone else's work. Whatever reason you have to share your work, you'll find there are scientists, educators, companies and public agencies who are using Creative Commons. By opening up permission, just imagine how much we can achieve. Collaborating on what we hold in common, being open about big decisions and finding solutions in the spaces between us. Let's work together, confidently and legally. It's good to share with Creative Commons. All right. So any questions about the licenses so far? I know he went very quickly, but I'm going to go over each of those six licenses with you um, now. So we're going to take a look at the types of Creative Commons licenses. And again, um, I'm going to use the same colors, green for the least restrictive, and red for the most restrictive when I'm going through the licenses. So the least restrictive license is Creative Commons by attribution, and the most restrictive license is Creative Commons by attribution, not non-commercial, no derivative works. Okay, so we're going to go over each of those. So the first one is Creative Commons by attribution. So we have the Creative Commons logo, and we have the by and the logo with the person. So this means Creative Commons by attribution. Others can copy, distribute, display, perform, remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. So it contains the five R's. Someone can also use your work commercially. So that picture in the video, if that holds this license, then I can add that picture of the bird in my book and sell my book. The next license is Creative Commons by attribution, share alike. So that's represented by CC by SA. This means that others can copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. So those are the five R's again. Others can distribute your work only under a license identical to the one you have chosen for your work. So basically it's saving the integrity of the original author's choice, right? The original author added this license to the work. Your revised remix work also has to hold this license. Okay, and someone can use it commercially. So again, someone can add it to their book, add it to their, if it's a video file, add it to their CD that they're selling and um, they can sell it legally. The next license is Creative Commons by Attribution Non-Commercial and that is represented by the CC the buy logo and the NC logo, the circle with a dollar sign and a slash through it. Okay. So this means others can copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. So again, the five R's. Others cannot use your work for commercial purposes. So here, if I add this to my 
um, PowerPoint, for example. Others can use my PowerPoint, they can change it, but they cannot make money off of it, okay? So they cannot sell my uh, PowerPoint. All right, so we're going to go to the right column of those licenses. And this is Creative Commons by attribution, non-commercial, and share alike. And that's represented by the CC, the by with a person, the NC, no, non-commercial, and the SA, share alike. So this means others can copy, distribute, display, perform, and remix your work and give you credit as requested by you. So again, the five R's are included here. Others can distribute your work only under a license identical to the one you have chosen for your work. So there's that share alike. And others cannot use your work for commercial purposes. So they have to use the same license, share it with others under the same license, and they cannot make a profit off of your original work or revisions of your work. All right, so we're going to go into the last two, which are the most restrictive. And the first one is, or the fourth one is Creative Commons by attribution and no derivative works. So this is represented by the CC again, the by and ND, which is that equal sign, has to remain the same. So no derivative works, no changes. So this means that others must give you credit as requested by you. Others can only copy, distribute, display, or perform verbatim copies of your work. So here's where the five R's are not included. So revise is not included because I have to keep that original work the same. I cannot remix it with my own work. I can use it. I can distribute it. I can use it in my class and share it with my students, but I cannot make any changes on that work. Okay, so that's the ND, no derivative works. And Others can use your work for commercial purposes, okay? So going back to that picture that we saw in the video, others can um, print a picture um, on a t-shirt and make um, money off of it, but they cannot change any part of that image. All right, and the last Creative Commons license is CC BY and CND. And this means Creative Commons by attribution, non-commercial, and no derivative works. Okay, so this is the most restrictive license. Others must give you credit as requested by you. Others can only copy, distribute, display, or perform verbatim copies of your work. So five R's are missing, right? No changes, no revisions, no remixes. And others can you cannot use your work for commercial purposes. Okay, so they can use your work as is, as long as you're not making a profit of, off of it, and as long as you're not making any changes to the original work. And as always, give credit to the author. Any questions? So why and how to attribute OERs? So how do we apply the Creative Commons licenses? So we're gonna take a look at a really great tool called the Creative Commons Chooser. I'm going to show you the beta form right now because this is what it's changing to. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at it. I'm going to show it to you first and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to um, use the uh, license chooser. So this is a great tool when you're not still not sure which license you want to apply to your work. OK, so it gives you a series of yes and no questions. Um, and as you um, choose yes or no and, and click on next, it will take you to the next question. 
Okay, so the first question is, do you know which license you need? If you say yes, I know which license I want to use, then you're done, right? You just go to the Creative Commons licenses um, where that are linked out here, and um, you choose you copy the license, uh, paste it to your work, and you're done. Okay, but let's assume we're not sure of which license we want to use. So no, I need help selecting a license. So I'm going to choose no and then click next. Takes me to the next question. Do you want attribution for your work? That means do you want to receive credit? If you say yes, it starts building your license here to the right. Okay, so the least restrictive, we're at the least restrictive now, which is CC BY. Okay, if you say no, no, you don't have to give me credit. You could just take my work and do what you want with it. There is a license called CC0 or CCO, and this means public domain. So by marking your work with a CCO public domain dedication, the creator is giving up their copyright and allowing reusers to redistribute or to distribute, remix, adapt, and build upon the material in any medium or format, even for commercial purposes. Okay, so by adding this CCO license to your work, most importantly is that you are giving up your copyright. Because remember, as they mentioned in the video, the Creative Commons licenses, you're still retaining your copyright, but with public domain, you are giving up your copyright. Okay, and that is your right to do so. All right, so if that's the license you want, you can just choose this license. You can click on see the deed. Okay, so I'm going to click there. This is what the deed looks like, and this is the link. You can just grab it from here. That's the link that you can add to your work. You can also add the logo, the CCO logo, this one here, to your work. Okay. Let's go back to the chooser. Okay, so I'm going to say, yes, I still want to receive um, credit from my work. Okay. All right, so I do have a question. What are the consequences of not following a CC license? So do you mean the consequences for a user or for the author? Michael? Uh, basically for a user. For the user. So if you are not following the license, then you're violating a copyright law. Um, so it's just like anything else, right? Any of us can download something from the internet and we have to be really, really careful with that because if we get caught, um, you'll likely receive a cease and desist letter from whoever that creator is, especially if it's something like Nike or a large corporation that retains uh, and is very serious about their copyright. Um, but basically you're violating copyright law. I realize maybe this is the wrong time to ask this, but maybe one quick follow up. If a teacher puts it into a canvas in the, within their district, would it be the teacher or the, the school? Both. So both. So that teacher is violating copyright law, downloading it to their canvas and basically putting both themselves and the district in a little bit of hot water if they get caught. Right. And we understand this happens, right? It's happened in the past. It'll probably continue happening in the future. And um, what we could do is just educate, right? Educate our faculty, educate um, everyone that is involved, right? Just um, so at my district, for example, I'm the OER coordinator and that's what I do. I um, create a lot of open office hours for our faculty. Um, a lot of professional development like I'm offering here, just so that we could avoid that because many times teachers don't realize that they are violating copyright law. Um, they like to fall back on fair use, but fair use is very, very limited. And I will have <laughs> another presentation on copyright and fair use. So um, wanna, if you're interested in that topic, make sure you sign up for that 
as well, but I'll be happy to answer questions here as well as they come up. All right, any other questions? Okay. All right, so let's go back to this question. Do you want attribution for your work? I'm going to say yes. I want to receive um, the proper attribution. So I'm going to click on next. And it takes me to the third question. Do you want to allow others to use your work commercially? So if I'm giving somebody my work, do I want them to, do I want to give them permission to make a profit off of it? If I say yes, my license did not change. It's still CC BY. If I say no, it adds that um, dollar sign with a circle and a slash through it. Okay. Others cannot use my work commercially. Okay. So I'm going to continue. And the next question, do you want to allow others to remix, adapt, build upon your work? Okay. So that basically, do you want to give... Um, the downstream users the right to make any changes. If I say yes, my license did not change. Okay, it stays the same. If I say no, I don't want anyone to make any changes or adaptations to my work, then it adds the no derivatives symbol, the equal sign with the circle around it. Okay, so it's building as I'm choosing. Okay, so I'm going to say yes. I want to give others the right to remix and make changes. And so it removed that equal sign with the, uh, with the circle around it. So I'm going to choose next. Um, and then number five, do you want to allow others to share adaptations of your work under any terms? Okay, if I say yes, didn't change the license one bit. If I say no, then it added the share alike, okay? Meaning I want others to use the revised or remixed work under the same license that I um, allowed, okay? So I'm going to choose next. And this part is very important. So now my license is built. As you see here to the right, I have the CC by non-commercial and CSA share alike, okay? It also has the definition here for me. In addition to that, I have a copy of the deed here, okay? So once I answer these questions, it's actually going to create the link for, for me to add to my work. These are really, really important statements. So the first one is I own or have authority to license the work. So either it's my own original work or it's work that gave me that permission to revise, reuse, remix. Okay, so I'm going to say yes. Um, the next one, I have read and understand the terms of the license. That's why you re you get a copy of the deed here. So if you want to take a look at it a little bit closer, click on the link to the deed, read about the deed and exactly what that means to add that license to your work. And if you're in agreement with that, then you're going to choose the next box. And then the last box, I understand that the Creative Commons license is not revocable. Okay, really important. Once I choose the license, I cannot change it. Take it back. Once I choose the license and share it, I cannot take it back. Okay, so before I share it, I could say, well, you know what? I decided I'm going to allow commercial work. That's fine. I have not shared my resource, my licensed resource yet. So I can continue um, changing it until I share it. Once I share it out to anyone, whether it's my students or share it with another colleague or add it to, you know, if I have an image and I upload it to Pixabay and I add my license, once I share it, I cannot change the license. It's not revocable, okay? So once I agree to the three terms, I choose next, and now it created my link that I can add to my work. So I can choose copy if I want the link with the symbols 
or the abbreviated symbols and the abbreviated um, abbreviation of the terms, or I can choose full license and now it's spelled out for me instead of having the abbreviation. Either way, I can copy it. If it's on my slides, I can copy it and add this to my slide. It's already on my copy board. I can also get an HTML code if I want to add it to Canvas or a website that requires a HTML code. It also gives me the XMP for a metadata. I've never used this one before. I typically use the rich uh, text because I'm adding it to a page or a document or my presentation, okay? And um, any questions about that? Ah, I forgot something really important. <laughs> the attribution details. Okay, so let's say it's that picture of the bird in the video. So I'm just going to title my work bird. Okay, I'm going to add my name as the creator. So this is if it's my original work. If it's not my original work, I'm going to add the creator's name here. Okay, unless it's a, a remix. If it's a remix, then I can add my work because I'm the new author of that remix. Okay, if I have a link to that work, I can add it here. If, I, if it's not posted on my website or something like that, I don't have to. I can also link to a creator profile. If, for example, people like to upload images to Unsplash or Pixabay. If I have a profile with them, I can add that link here. And then the year that the creation was created. Okay. So as you notice, as I was adding the attribution details, it was also adding that to my license. So the title of the work, there's that copyright symbol, right? Because Creative Commons still uh, you're still holding the copyright. You still are the copyright holder of your original work. It's just copyright with permissions. The, the date the work was created, my name is the author, and there's my Creative Commons license. So now it's complete. I can choose done. It shook it so it remind me to take a copy of that and then add that to my slides or my work. Okay. Any questions? I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so does this establish your copyright, the CC, or is there another way that you establish copyright or is copyright just assumed? Or? The copyright established the moment you create anything. Um, you no longer have to um, hire an attorney or something like that. For, for our purposes, for our educational purposes. Now, if I was, if I had a patent on something, then yeah, I'd have an attorney. I'd want, you know, something a little bit more legal. But for our educational purposes, um, you don't have to hire an attorney. The Creative Commons licenses helps you retain and actually protect your copyright, right? But copyright copyright is now established as of like 20, 2008 or something, I believe. Um, I have to look back at my notes. Um, but Copyright establish is established the moment you create something. Does that include works of art? Yes. Like like a painting. Yes. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, if I were doing something like that, I'd probably take pictures, put it somewhere, email it to myself. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do to like have your proof right before right. you add the license, but. Um, yes, the moment you create something, even if it's just a doodle on a napkin, the moment you create something that is your original work, it is automatically copyrighted. Wow, thank you. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not an attorney. <laughs> I forgot to say that I'm not an attorney, but I have taken many classes from attorneys on this, this exact topic, so... I have a little bit of experience. I'm also Creative Commons license. I forgot to mention that in my bio, but I am Creative Commons licenses licensed. And that means that 
or certified, not licensed, certified. And that means that I have taken classes on this topic as well. Um, Michael, you had a question? Yeah, I mean, I was just curious which ones you recommend. I mean, I, I see I mean, no commercial use is pretty clear, but share alike seems to be really pretty restrictive. Is that? Is that it is, it is. And it really depends on um, the creator. Um, I like using CC by NC, you know, that's you typically, let me see, what did I add to my slides here? I change my mind all the time, <laughs> but let's see. I added, ah, CC by NCSA. Ah, okay, because since this is a presentation and I'm sharing it with you, if you create another presentation based on my slides, which I'm going to share with you at the end, um, I want you to be to also share with others. So I want to continue that sharing of my slides or your derivative works of my slides. Um, so sometimes I'll include the essay and sometimes I won't. It just depends. But once you become familiar with the licenses, um, you'll get a feel for when you want to use, when, when you feel like it's appropriate to use one over the other. Does that make sense? Okay. And maybe you'll get into this later, but so like, just for example, say we were going to use your your slide presentation. You already have the little CC logo in there with everything, so we don't really have to do anything. We just because you've already put it there, or do we need? To... You would you would have to use my same logo, right? So you could just leave it there. You could change your name. Let's say you add one more slide, or delete slides, or add something to one of my slides. Whatever change you make. Um, you can uh, make that change, add your name here, but you're going to have to give me credit somehow for my original work. Okay. So maybe the next slide, the original was created by Diana Vera Alba, blah, 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 2003, whatever you want to put on there. Um, but yes, so that's the beauty of Creative Commons. Now, I will tell you my slides, and I think I have, I don't know, 40 something in here, 50. Okay. So, do you all know Penny Pearson? She was my OER yeah. guru when I first started years and years ago with OERs. And I think I went to every single presentation that I could on uh, that Penny presented on OERs because she was just a spectacular presenter. And so some of my slides on here are similar um, because that's what I learned from her. But if there's a slide on here that's copied, I would give Penny that, um, that credit. So um, yeah, it's kind of like, I mean, I see it like when you're in college and you're learning, I mean, Someone created that knowledge, whether it was that professor or that professor, you know, got it from another book. I mean, it's it's that same sharing, right, of that knowledge, but this time it's free, right? I'm not at a university having to pay tuition and things like that. So, um, yep. Any other questions? All right. So we're going to talk about attributions and for the purposes of this attribute, I'm going to show you an attribution builder that you can use for your own uh, work as well as the work of others. So the site that I just showed you, the Creative Commons License Builder, that is really should be used for your own work, um, but uh, Oops, let me go back. This uh, Washington State Attribution Builder you can use for your own work or revised work and the work of others. Um, so attributions are an important part of OER in defining how you can legally borrow someone else's work or identifying the permission level or licensing you give others to use your own work. 
So equally important is the ability to understand the various levels of permissions identified by the author of the OER, whether it be course materials, modules, open textbooks, openly licensed videos, software tools, full courses, or any other materials that are deemed to support access to learning. Okay, so for example, here's a picture that I did not create. I downloaded it from Pixabay, and Pixabay has these pre-made um, attributions, okay? So I used their pre-made attribution. Um, I just copied and pasted it and added, but I can I could have also used an attribution builder. Um, so now that you can identify the six licenses and their permitted use, we can look at how to correctly add attributions to your work and the work of others. So we've looked at several OER sites that house ready-made materials, um, textbooks and images. Once you find OER materials you would like to use, there's a final important step to correctly attribute the work you will use from others or license your own work or a combination of both if they're remixed. There is an easy to use open resource that contains a fillable attribution template from the Washington State Board of Community and Technical Colleges. It's called the Open Attribution Builder, and this allows educators to build an attribution to correctly give credit to others or your own work. Okay. So that is what I used here. And the nice thing about the attribution builder, just like we saw in the Cre Creative Commons license creator, is it starts building as you're adding to the template. Okay. There's a video here on how to use the attribution builder. This is a video that I created for our faculty uh, and our district does have a channel on um, YouTube. So if you watch the video at the end of the video, you can click on the channel because there are lots of professionally made videos um, that our district has created and has shared on YouTube. So I'm not going to go through the video because I'm going to show you step by step um, what's in there already. I'll show you here in the presentation, but the video is there for you to use. Um, so why and how to attribute the OERs. So some open resources provide a ready-made attribution. Like I mentioned, Pixabay has their ready-made ready attribution once you download an image from Pixabay. So these attributions typically appear near the image or when downloading the resource from the website. For resources that do not provide a ready-made attribution, the Open Attribution Builder is an excellent user-friendly option. When you are um, building that attribution, you want to keep this acronym in mind, TASSEL. So to build that attribution, you're going to need the title of the resource. If you don't know the title of the resource or it's not obvious, you can use the word image like Pixabay creates if that's what you're downloading or using or book or, you know, news article or whatever it is uh, that you're downloading or you're attributing. Um, the author, so who created the resource. The source, where did you find the resource? So typically we're searching online, right? So um, it will be very uh, easy to copy the link. And then the license for that resource, okay? The license that the author wants to use, or you, if you're the author. Um, so here are some steps to creating that attribution. So what I did is I went to Pixabay and I found a copyright free image of a butterfly. Okay, so my first step is I found this image that I wanted to use for a presentation. And when I was on the Pixabay site, um, I remember to copy the URL. So once you find the image or resource, take note of the um, image URL or the resource URL, okay? 
You can also um, title the image. So in this case, I was searching, if you see here in the search section, I was searching for monarch butterfly. And this is the image, or there are many images came up, but this is the image that I chose. So I could use monarch butterfly um, as the title, or I could just use the word image, okay? And then, um, so there is my search, right, where I used that title. And then on Pixabay, the author's name appears on the far right. So in this case, it's B. Barlow is the author. And it's easy on Pixabay because if I would, if this was a live site, I could click on the person's uh, name and it would take me to their Pixabay site or their Pixabay account where they have other images. So if you want to make sure that that is the author, um, on if you're using Pixabay or Unsplash, they use the similar format. And then the type of attribution license. So for the purposes of Pixabay, Pixabay uses free for commercial use. They say no attribution required. So I cannot add the, I, I would not add that dollar sign with a line through it for this um, license, okay? But I, even though it says no attribution required, I still add an attribution for two reasons. Um, first is for selfish reason for me, because if sometimes I reuse images, I do a lot of presentations and there's images that, that I like, um, or there's authors that I like um, their images. So if I add the attribution, I can go back to my slides. If I don't remember where I retrieved it from, because I do use multiple sites, I can go back to my original um, picture or um, slides and click on the attribution and it takes me to the picture. Okay, so that's one reason, right? Um, kind of has the history of where I retrieved it from. And then secondly is if I'm going to share my slides with others, I want to give them the right to um, follow this author or retrieve um, more works from the author. Um, so, yep. Yeah. So even though it says no attribution required, I still like to attribute. Um, so this is what the Open Attribution Builder looks like. So I'm going to go through this in the slides with you, and then I'm going to um, give you an opportunity to practice on your own. Um, so you see that there's a section here where I'm going to add the title. There's two sections where I add the URL. So I could add the URL where I found the picture here, and I can add it here. Or if I want to go a little deeper um, on Pixabay, you can also choose the author's URL where they house all the rest of their work. I don't do that. I just, because then it gets really confusing. Um, so I just add the URL where I retrieved that particular image. Okay, so I add it here and I add it here. I add the author's name, however it appears on Pixabay or Unsplash, and then I choose the license, okay? Um, under Pixabay, you cannot add um, non-commercial, right? So it cannot be a non-commercial license. So I'll typically choose um, CC BY, okay? Um, but you can go to the author's site um, if to see if they specify a particular license, okay? So again, I'm gonna add the title there for my image. It was Monarch Butterfly. I added the URL in the two sections where it says URL. I added the author's name. And then I chose the license, CC BY. Okay, so as I was adding, let me go back. As I was adding the items, the tassel items, it was building the attribution in this section here. So there was the title, it added the URL. So basically it um, added the URL as a link. It added the author's name, so it was building. It added the license, so I don't have to go back 
to CC um, the Creative Commons website. It's automatically adding it here for me. And then um, the attribution is complete. So all I have to do is copy and paste that attribution from the template here to my work. Okay, and that's what I did here. So this was the final attribution that I added to the image. Okay, any questions about that? I had one quick one. Uh, they say you, you download the photo, so you don't have a, a website or anything anymore. Should you, do you put a, like I, I put it in without anything and it just puts a, the name of the, the document with no link to go mm -hmm. to. Would I put like a link from, just copy a link from Google Drive or, or just leave um, it there? I would copy the link from where that original, um, where the original work was. So you mean if you accidentally closed Pixabay? Is that what you're saying? Like, so if I was here, I downloaded the image and then I accidentally closed it? Yeah, or I've just got some image in Drive that I had downloaded. I guess I wouldn't have to attribute it. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I don't know. If it's if it's your own work, I would definitely attribute it. You can create, you can use the um, attribution builder for your own work, definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if it's an old image that you don't know where you retrieved it from, mm -hmm. um, I guess if you have it, well, if you have it uploaded to Google Drive, nobody would be able to access it. So it could, would kind of be a mute point, okay. right? Because it's your own drive. It's not an open site. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and add the Attribution Builder um, link to chat. And then you can go to Pixabay. And so there's the attribution builder. Here's the link to Pixabay. It's just pixabay.com. And go ahead and practice. Oops, <laughs> there's Pixabay. Practice um, on the attribution builder, which is here. So while you're doing that, um, one of the nice things about Pixabay, like I mentioned, is that they all, once you choose an image that you like, if I want to download the image, I just choose free download. I choose the size I want. And when I click download again, it automatically gives me an um, attribution. So I don't have to use the attribution builder with Pixabay necessarily, um, but I want you to practice um, using that attribution builder. Um, so it's more for sites um, that don't use an attribution builder, then you want to have something to, to use, right? So that's why I gave you this. Um, the other thing that I mentioned earlier when I was showing you in the slides is, um, close this. So I use this um, author's slides a lot. And if I wanna take a look at what else they offer um, on Pixabay, I can click on the author's name and then it shows me all their images. So they have tons of images. So if I want to keep the images on my slides consistent, um, I can stick with one um, author. Um, if that's something that you would like to do, that's available for you on Pixabay. Also, Unsplash um, does the same thing. So let's say, again, I'll just stick with butterfly. And there's the image that I liked. Once I choose download free, it automatically gives me, um, oops, automatically gives me, I could just copy it, um, an attribution, okay? 
if I want to look at the slide of the author's other images, I can choose the author's name here. And this is on Unsplash. Close that. And then I can see everything that Anne has posted to Unsplash. So she looks like this um, photographer likes a lot of, um, and there's more, lots of nature images. So if that's what I want to put in my slides and keep my feel of the images consistent, that's a nice thing to do on Unsplash as well. Okay. Any questions on the attribution builder? So on this presentation, I'm not going to go into repositories as much, or I can actually, because I think we have a few minutes. Um, but I was showing you Pixabay and Unsplash because it's just quick and easy to show you the images. But if I go to Creative Commons, oops. Or if I go to um, a repository, like, um, oh my gosh, I just went blank, Merlot. <laughs> Sometimes the large repositories, and these are, the repositories are um, these giant websites that house open educational resources. So sometimes they will have their own, I've noticed that some of them are adding, um, attribute content builders and attribution builders. So there's all kinds of great resources for attribution builders, but I do like um, the one that I showed you here because it's just so easy to use. You don't have to create an account. It's just an open resource. Then I could ask a question. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> like, of course. I, I, I had a presenter from the city of San Jose come into our class last week and they left a PowerPoint, but also there's some you know, uh, I don't know, images or different things that were downloadable from their website. None of them have any kind of, you know, CC anything on them. So did, mm -hmm. in those cases, then you you don't have to attribute if if they, can you just assume that it's public domain or something? Or? Well, you can't assume it's public domain. Okay. You have to assume it's copyrighted. Okay. It's actually the opposite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's really unfortunate. Um, and they were presenting on open educational resources? No, 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 no. It was, oh, it was okay. On recycling. I was gonna, oh, okay, okay. I thought, oh my goodness, how could they not do that? <laughs> yes, you have to assume that the images or anything else from any website or anything online is okay. copyright. So you could attribute, but maybe not, then you would not select a license. Is that... Because you, because yes, you in that case, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to contact the author and okay. ask for permission. I see. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So okay. yeah, and, so and I've done that. I've done that before. And okay, so are you familiar with the Marshall website, Marshall Reading? No. So I'm an ESL instructor, and in ESL we use Marshall Reading quite a bit, and they had still have a wonderful website where it said teachers can download from here. So download these um, uh, worksheets and download these reading articles that they created. And I went into, it, it was an, it's an adult, adult school in, um, oh my gosh, I just went blank. Anyways, it's an adult school and they received funding to create this wonderful website, but they didn't license it. They didn't add a copyright. They didn't add anything to it. And so um, I contacted, there was a contact button on their website somewhere. Here it is, contact. And I contacted um, Marshall and it's uh, it uh, their director co contacted me well, I, I explained, hey, you guys don't have a like a um, 
They didn't even have this lo tiny little logo here. They didn't have anything in their original site. They didn't have uh, copyright. They didn't have anything on there. And so I said, hey, you don't have this, but you're on your site. It says you give teachers permission. Um, do you know about OERs? And this was years ago. I contacted them. And so we were chatting back and forth. And I was kind of giving her the PD over our chat. And they ended up licensing their site and they ended up adding the Creative Commons logo. So I was so happy about that because it they clearly gave teachers permission to use their work, but now they're giving teachers permission because I didn't know, can I use it in my book? Can I use it you know, on my website? How can I share it? They're saying I could use it in my classroom, but can I share it with another teacher or, you know, so, um, it still doesn't hurt to contact, um, especially presenters, to contact um, a site or something that you like to use because they will spell it out for you and tell you exactly what they what they want and hopefully then license it with a Creative Commons license. So anyways, that's my fun little story about that. <laughs> I was really excited when when they finally did add that. that that was their original intention they just didn't know how to do it so um, that was great any other questions is a Merlot a place where we can find open resource textbooks yes absolutely um, I'm going to share I created a site similar to a Merlot, <laughs> but in a very much smaller scale. So if you use um, Canvas, I created for my our faculty, I created, oops, we just have a few more minutes, but that's okay. I created this um, Canvas site that houses lots of resources for my district, for my instructors. And um, so let me just go to modules really quick. In this site, I um, kind of narrowed it down for our instructors. I included repositories and for images, um, lots of different repositories for images and repositories for lessons and books. The starred ones, Merlot is one of them, are my favorites. OER Commons is great because it includes an adult education filter, but all of these sites have resources, tons of books that are openly licensed. So if you use Canvas, go to Canvas Commons because I added my Canvas account to the Commons and type my name, Diana Vera Alba, and you can download this and use it at your site. Okay, so it looks like this. It says OER for SDCCD because we are a very large community college district. And so we have lots of colleges, but you can still download even though it says CC, SDCCD. You can um, download it to your Canvas account or or I would actually get a sandbox or a shell, download it and share it with your um, staff as well. Okay. All right. Oops, let me go back. I think that was it, but let me double check. <laughs> All right. Um, so everybody had a chance to practice. That's great. Um, we practiced. Yep. Yeah. And that was the end. So um, a quick summary, we took a deep dive into Creative Commons licenses. We looked at the five R's of OER and the Creative Commons licenses. Um, we looked at how to apply Creative Commons licenses using the Creative Commons chooser and also the Open Attribution Builder. And um, on Slide number 46, I have resources for you that I used for this presentation. Okay, so all of these are links. There's a great OER toolkit that was shared with me. I did not create it, but it was shared with me. So I'm sharing it with you. Um, there are some video links there at the bottom. And yes, you can find OERs everywhere now. Most US college and colleges and universities have an OER section on their website. 
okay? You can also use a Google advanced search. You can look in YouTube. Many YouTubers are now licensing their work with Creative Commons. Khan Academy, Ted Ed, Ted Ed holds that strict, um, this, the most restrictive license, but that's okay. Their videos are beautiful as is. I don't need to revise any of theirs. Uh, and lots of repositories. My favorites are listed here, but there are many others. Um, open textbooks, if you're in an adult education site, BC Open Ed has lots and lots of resources for adult ed. Merlot has lots of resources for K-12, community college and universities, and some for adult ed. But um, BC Open Ed and OER Commons both have great resources for adult education.